Friday is here again. And what would Friday be without some Jess Franco? The inimitable Jess Franco. So today I'm going to talk about a film that I think is the most accessible horror film for your average horror fan and really a modern day horror fan that's used to kind of today's gore. I think this is the film that's the most accessible of the Jess Franco filmography um, of any that I can imagine. And that is the, his 1976 Jess Franco's the Jack, the Ripper. Uh, this is probably the best of the collaborations between Franco and Erwin C. Dietrich, the Swiss producer. And again, certainly from a horror movie standpoint, this is the one film that when you look at it, I would say that those negative Nancys that would say that Franco can't really produce, he's a schlock director, can't produce a coherent film. Uh, this I would offer up as Exhibit A saying to the contrary. This really does play like a combination of German Expressionism and a gothic, classic gothic hammer movie with today's modern gore thrown in. The gore in this film is shocking. Uh, it's And it's not something that, as a Francophile, you're used to seeing. Uh, but he does not hold back. And there is a brutal, brutal scene in this uh, with Lena Ramey, ironically enough, that uh, it's tough to watch, to be honest with you. It, 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 the, the whole sequence of the rape of Lena Ramey and the subsequent dissection and killing of Lena Ramey, I mean, man, it's uh, it ranks right up there with kind of a proto-German splatter film, you know, one of those kind of things. In fact, there's a seven-second cut piece on here and the, uh, the extras that's even more graphic that didn't make the film for some reason. Jack the Ripper in 1976 has been languishing and permeating and haunting the Walmart discount bins in America for a long time as a public domain chopped all to hell DVDs that uh, you, know, you can pick up at Walmart for next to nothing. Thankfully, uh, Full Moon, in partnership, I guess, with Erwin Ir C. Dietrich, uh, has put out a pristine transfer of this film. Uh, German, there's a German Blu-ray out that I haven't seen, but I understand it's similar quality. But I got to tell you, this, the print quality on this is beautiful. It looks like a, a superior Blu-ray print. I'm very happy with it. Kudos to Full Moon Charlie Band and Erwin C. Dietrich for the restoration. In fact, I think they realized that they did such a good job because they got a 17-minute uh, featurette on the restoration of the film, and it is gorgeous. I, I'm just—it's uh, one of the best-looking DVDs I've ever seen. Klaus Kinski, who stars as Doctor Orloff, uh, is basically it's a loose storyline of Jack the Ripper but really what this film is it's as much a color reboot of Jess Franco's favorite character Dr. Orloff as it is a Frank uh, uh, just a uh, just Jesus Christ a um, it's this is as much a Orloff a color Orloff reboot as it is a Jack the Ripper film. Uh, and in the in a commentary track, well, it's not a commentary track. The extra has a 40-minute audio with Jess Franco. Uh, he talks about the, the thought process behind the film. Re really, what we're talking about here is an Orloff film. His favorite character is an Orloff film, and the producers wanted a Ripper film, a slasher film. And so he got the best of both worlds. He was able to put his Orloff character on the screen and satisfy the producers at the same time. Because this is a, the Klaus Kinski in this film, uh, in his portrayal, is uh, a complicated character, which is good. He's a, he's a schizophrenic uh, that has uh, misogynic mother hate issues that he that he exhibits by killing 
uh, cheap prostitutes. Basically, he he grew up thinking, I guess, that his mother was a prostitute and a whore, and he's going to get revenge on all the cheap women in the world by killing them off. <clears throat> and that, by killing them off, he's cleansing himself. By day, he's this Puritan, rigid, soft-spoken, almost painfully shy uh, physician. And Klaus Kinski pulls off those contrasting roles beautifully, as only Klaus Kinski can do. I mean, one minute he's this nice-looking physician that's, you know, rubbing little kids on the head and taking care of patients and the next he's uh, a psychopath and he does it beautifully our buddy Herbert Fuchs who is uh, well Jess Franco's buddy obviously he's in this film as a peasant and a patient of uh, Dr. Orloff is that basically he kind of is hovering around town and he finally figures out what's going on and he blackmails ultimately tries to blackmail Orloff to uh, disastrous results uh, you got Lena Romay in this film and she is playing a burlesque dancer that shows off her bottom she got a, I mean she looked good in this man she's got a great bottom to show off and she knows it um, she ends up being the, the fodder for one of the kills and, and she gets it bad I mean, it's the worst brutal killing in the film. And uh, Jess Franco definitely lingers on it with the camera. Uh, Jess Franco has been, been pretty clear about his feeling about horror films. Uh, his inspirations come from German Expressionism, Murnau, uh, Dreyer's Vampire, things like that. And uh, that, those influences permeate this film. This is, this is just a straight-up gothic uh, nightmare. Everything is dark and shadowy, beautiful lighting, uh, uh, strange angled shots that, that really harken back to the kind of thing you would see in Cabinet of Dr. Caligari or uh, a Murnau film. Uh, so he's obviously tipping his hat to that, that, to that kind of influence. Uh, uh, it's one of the film. It's one of the best, most coherent films you're going to find from Franco, quite honestly. And I think, in knowing that there's been a lot of renditions of Jack the Ripper, and this one is a loose retelling. It's not. This is not trying to be uh, true to the to any books or the common knowledge about the Ripper tale. In fact, Franco readily admits that at least from his standpoint at the time he made the film and he talked about it in the 40 minute audio commentary there were two schools of thought about who jack the ripper was one was he's was royalty that was protected by the king or queen at the time um and then he the other alternative was he was an argentine doctor that uh, was working in london and then was um, thrown out of London before they actually caught the Ripper. Uh, there's other, there's obviously in today's world, we know there's other scenarios with regard to the Ripper. Um, in fact, there's a there's one where the guy ended up in the United States and committed, subsequently committed even more murders. Um, but, hit, but the story, the, what I wanted to point out was that the Franco doesn't have much of an interest in what he believes to be the the true the true ripper killer was probably royalty that was protected and he had no interest in portraying a social political drama he has no interest in those type of films so he chose for his storyline a simple argentine doctor a foreign doctor in london leading this double life and it makes for a great story and a great film uh, the, some of the shots in this, I mean, there's just an endless parade of beautiful shots and, uh, you got to give him, give him his due. I mean, there's spiral staircase shots. There's shots where Klaus is walking up a dark staircase. The door opens and, and a little light comes out and all you see is the shadowing of his hat and his cloak. I mean, it, it's the kind of stuff that if you're not looking for it carefully, 
you're just not going to think about those type of things, but it clearly feels so much like a Murnau film or a Fritz Lang film as it does, or, or really a Gothic hammer film as it does a Franco film. Uh, you, you get the burlesque scene, the dancing, you get the nudity, you get full, full frontal nudity in this uncut version, which remind, which quickly reminds you, yeah, we're watching a Franco film. Uh, but there's so many things that are that are different from this film that uh, I think it's readily accessible to your average horror film. Probably the most accessible uh, to today's audiences in terms if they want to really get into Franco. <clears throat> Walter Bumgardner did the music, uh, and it's perfectly fits every scene for the film. Uh, got no complaints with that. It's fantastic. Um, there's a just a there, you know there's a kaleidoscope of things that, from my standpoint, resonate with me in this film and I, and the and the shadowing effects and the lighting, it's like a kalei. There's a scene on this that that'll I'll probably never forget where, uh, it's a flash. It's a kind of a nightmarish flashback scene where Orloff Kinski has this dream sequence, uh, flashback to his mother. But he sees his mother in one of his potential victims, that person being Charlie Chapman's daughter, Josephine Chapman. She's in this film as a um, kind of a ballet dancer. Uh, but in this, this nightmare sequence, it's, it, it's shot with this um, kaleidoscope kind of feel to it where he sees his mother, the prostitute, in, this, in the Josephine Chaplin character. Wow, great scene. Fantastic scene. And, uh, you know, Klaus Kinski just chews up the scenery. <laughs> Everything he's in, and this is no exception, he just chews the scenery. And he obviously enjoyed, as did Franco, that actor-director relationship, which was very rare for, for Klaus Kinski, as we all know. Uh, Franco adored him, and obviously likewise for Kinski because he gave a great performance. Um, it's obvious that he was not as troubled as he had been in other productions in this film. He did a he did a fantastic job. Uh, that's all I've got for it. I would say this is an eight out of ten. I consider this really my favorite Jack the Ripper rendition. Um, and certainly from a slasher film, horror film, proto-slasher, however you want to describe this film, uh, it's a worthy addition to your horror collection. So that is going to wrap up another Franco Friday. And uh, let me know what you think. Appreciate you watching.